Please, Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, man, I want to say call halal, Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh, Shah, Bashem, Rakah, Badash. I want to send double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. I want to send much peace, love, and salutations to your brothers out there pushing words to Syria and truth. This is Brother Ariala. And real quick, man, I just wanted to do kind of start to make a little series. The brother um, in our camp put a challenge to read uh, 1 Samuel, the 30th chapter. It's a real dope story about King David. And then it just brought uh, brought to mind the idea to just you know just dope stories in the scriptures that that, that always um, fill me up and you know, with joy that always uh, made me feel better after reading them. I said you know why not put it on wax man and just kind of read through the stories uh, uh, piece by piece you know with uh, brothers and sisters man and uh, we're willing it can have the same effect with with some some others you know especially maybe some new people that may not have read these stories yet opportunity for you to kind of sit in and read the story along with me and uh just kind of pick out whatever nuggets okay that being said i want to um uh, read today about the story of elijah all right and um it's just one of my favorite stories man it's just one of my favorite stories that i've always enjoyed um, and so I want to read it today. And uh, it's First Kings, the 18th chapter. I'm going to read it in a, K, uh, uh, in a King James Version. You know, sometimes these stories are also interesting to go and read in the NLT. And maybe on a couple of these volumes, I'll do some in the NLT. Okay. But with that being said, um, I want to start with First Kings, chapter 18. I'm going to start at verse 18. Now, when you read up, it's basically Obadiah meeting up with... Um, Elijah and Elijah saying, "Hey, you know, uh, tell tell uh, Ahab that I'm here." Which he, uh, we know Ahab and and Jezebel were ruling in wickedness, and, and so now we have this confrontation that uh, Elijah is having. Okay, First Kings eighteen seventeen it says, "And it came to pass when Ahab saw, saw Elijah that Ahab said unto him, Art thou he that troubleth Israel?" And he answered, "I have not troubled Israel, but thou and thy father's house." And that ye have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and thou hast followed Baalim. Now, therefore, send and gather to me all Israel unto Mount Carmel. You know, and for those of you studying on, look up Baalim, look up Mount Carmel. Okay. It says, and the prophets of Baal, 450, and the prophets of the groves, 400, which eat at Jezebel's table. It says, so Ahab sent unto all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, how long halt you between two opinions? If the Lord be, be the power, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. Then Elijah, then said Elijah unto the people, I, only I, Oh, even I only remain a prophet of the Lord, a prophet of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Elijah said he stands alone. But by all his prophets are 450 men. So it takes some type of boldness to be able to come up against 450 people all by yourself, man. I mean, you go out, you got five people against one. <laughs> you better get up out of there. That's called getting jumped. <laughs> Anybody smart going to get up out of there, right? Well, the, the boldness through the spirit of, uh, of, of our forefather Elijah went up against 450, okay? How would you feel in that moment? Think of put yourself in that situation, okay? Put yourself in that situation. Um, and the scripture says this in, in verse 23. Let them therefore give two bullocks and let them choose one bullock for themselves and cut it in pieces and lay it on wood. And pour no fire under, and I will dress the other bullet and lay it on wood, and put no fire under. That calls something else to mind. You knowing how, knowing how to dress a bullet, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just, just things like that. Verse 24 says, "And call ye on the name of your gods, and I will call on the name of Yahweh. And the God that answereth by fire, let him be the Most High." And all the people answered and said, it is well spoken. So everybody was listening. They said, okay, bet. Verse 25 says, and Elijah said unto the prophets of Baal, 
Choose you one bullock for yourselves and dress it first, for ye are many, and call on the name of your gods, uh, but put no fire under. And they took the bullock, which was given them, and they dressed it, and they called on the name of Baal from morning until noon, saying, Oh, Baal, hear us. But there was no voice, <laughs> nor any that answered. And they leaped upon the altar which was made. All right. So they leaping, cutting themselves, probably going crazy. And it came to pass at noon that Elijah mocked them and said, Cry aloud, for he is a God. Either he is talking or he is pursuing or, or, or he is in a journey or pre-adventure he's sleeping and must be waking. So Elijah's mocking the prophets of Baal, which is hilarious to think about, watching 450 of these dudes go crazy from morning until noon. And Elijah's just looking at these dudes like, man, y'all some clowns, you know. And it says, and they cried aloud and cut themselves after their manner with knives and lancelets till the blood gushed out upon them. All right. And I love uh, uh, the scene in Conan the Barbarian. I usually kind of use that clip of when they was in the... Uh, temple, the temple harlots and their temples and people cutting themselves and having sex orgies trying to conjure up their false gods, man. So imagine these guys, man, cutting themselves, which we know the scripture says don't do that, okay? Verse 29 says, and it came to pass when midday was passed and they prophesied until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that there was neither voice nor nor any to answer, nor any that regard it. And Elijah said unto all the people, come near unto me. And all the people came near unto him, and he prepared the altar of the Lord that was broken down. And Elijah took 12 stones, according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, and unto whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be thy name. And, and with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord. And he made a trench about the altar as great as could contain two measures of seed. And he put the wood in order and cut the bullock in pieces and laid him on the wood and said, fill four barrels of water and pour it on the burnt offering and on the wood. So he doubled down. He doubled down. He said, you know what? Get some water. Go ahead. Pour it on, my, on this altar. Pour it on there. Go ahead. And he said, do it the second time. All right. And they did it the second time. And he said, do it the third time. And they did it the third time. Right. The third time. They took four barrels of water and completely drenched this altar in water. And the water rained down about the altar. And he filled the trench also with water just to make sure it held. OK. That's why I love this story. Verse 36 says, and it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord, power of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art the power in Israel, thou art the most high in Israel, and that I am thy servant, and that I have done all these things at thy word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me. OK, that this people may know that thou art the Lord power and that thou and that thou has turned their heart back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. Bro, <laughs> the fire was so hot. That after three times they poured four barrels of water, so it just filled up with water. The fire came down and lipped up that water and made it evaporate like it was nothing and completely burnt the altar. Power of Yah Bashim Yahushai answered Elijah. Right? Verse 39 says, And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they said, The Lord, He is the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. How are we going to say it? He is the he is the power, the Lord, he is the most high. He is the God, right? Capital G, right? Verse 40 says, and Elijah said unto them, Take the prophets of, of Baal, let, let not one of them escape. And they took them. So the people who watch this, who basically they've been underneath 
uh, Ahab and Jezebel. They got these prophets of Baal pretty much running the city. Like these, like these poor choppy preachers stealing people's money. So then the people that was round about that watched this whole thing go down, they watched these people cutting themselves, tripping, nothing answered. But then they watched the power of the Most High through Elijah come down, burn the altar. So they said, man, don't let you, don't, don't let one of these dudes escape. Okay. And and they took them, and Elijah brought them down to the to the brook of Kishon and slew them there. And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. So basically, after they slew, after they slew all these prophets, it's, it was like a thunderstorm was coming. Okay? It was like a thunderstorm was coming down, right? It says, so Ahab went up to eat and drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Mount Carmel. And he cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees. Okay, he went to pray. And he said, and, and said to his servant, go up now, look toward the sea. And he went up and looked and said, there is nothing. And he said, go again seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, behold, there arises a little cloud out of the sea like a man's hand. And he said, go up and say to Ahab, prepare thy chariot and get thee down, that the rain stop thee not. And it came to pass that, uh, in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and wind, and there was a great rain. And, and Ahab rode and went to Jezebel. And the hand of the Lord was, was on Elijah, and he girded up his loins and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezebel. So I always love this story. I'm not going to read the next chapter, man. But, you know, for those people who, who want to continue reading, please do. Um, it just kind of shows the power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah versus these false gods. And it's, in the pray, it's a prelude to the power that's getting ready to come. You know, we're going to start to see miracles in this place. Esau thinks he got it, but there's not going to be any mercy on the wicked of our people, like it says in Ezekiel 9 and 4. Right. Ezekiel 9 and 4 says, and the Lord said unto him, go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. Men like Elijah, sighing and crying. Verse 5 says, and to the others, he said, in my hearing, go, go ye after him through the city and smite. Let not your eyes spare, neither have ye pity. Slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women. But come not near any man upon whom is the mark and begin at my sanctuary. That they and then they began at the ancient men which were before the house. Okay. So the most high is gonna draw that line in the sand just like Elijah did. Just like Elijah did. First Chronicles chapter 16, verse 23. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Show forth from day to day his salvation. Declare his glory among the heathen, his marvelous works among all nations. For great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. He also is the, is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the people are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Glory and honor in his, are in his presence. Strength and gladness are in his place. Give unto the Lord, ye kindreds of the people. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due to his name. Bring an offering. And, and come before him, worship the Lord in beauty and holiness. And we sacrifice, we are uh we go upon the altar out there on the highways and byways and offer up our sacrifices with our tongue. Hey, and so hey, this is one of one of the dope stories in the scriptures. I'm gonna come back with uh quite a few. I, I wrote a few down that I'm gonna go go back and read. Maybe a stories of battle, stories of faith, just victory stories in the spirit, man. Um, I'm gonna go to the comment board real quick. Let's see, GMS must endure, put Isaiah 44 and 8. Fear ye not, neither be afraid. Have not I told thee from the time from the time and have and have declared it? Ye are my witnesses. Is there a God besides me? Yea, there is no God. I know not any. Let's go, champ. Great scripture. Die uh, garments from Basra, Shalom, put Sirach 48, 1 through 3. Then stood up Elijah the prophet as fire, and his word burned like a lamp. He brought a sore famine uh, upon them. Yeah, because you read up in the uh, top of that chapter, uh, there was a famine. And, and by his zeal, he diminished their number. 
by the word of the Lord, he shut up the heaven and also three times brought down fire. Let's go, champ. Khan, Khan, hey, man. And that's the power we're looking for with the glory of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh man. So this is the first volume, man. I just want to read through that, man. Lord willing, man. Uh, uh, brothers, and enjoy that story. Please add comments um, and whatever you want in the, in the comment section. With that being said, man, call halal Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Bashim. Hashem, Kadash, double honors once again to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Much peace, love, and salutations to all of you out there pushing the glory of Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shah, and sincerity and truth. Shalom.